Okay, stream is live. Good morning, everybody. This is the 1879 Actual Play. Uh, I am Brad Decker. I'm the line developer for 1879. If everybody else wants to do their introductions and uh, get us our prep while I go ahead and make the announcements. Well, I'm Joel. I'm one of the writers for 1879. I'm playing Morgana, an aristocrat and an elf who is, I think, still dealing with the emotional fallout of the last case. So, I think dealing with it better than she was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, thank you, Medium James, for the good message. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll cover that for the thing, but yes. August. Yeah, I'm Michelle and I play August, an elven investigator um, who's trying to refine his place in the world. River? I am Letsy. I play River, an elven explorer uh, looking to uh, set up a society away from uh, those that do not want her. I'm Andy. I'm recovering from the plague. Not that plague. I'm the GM, I think. Okay, Brad. I'm still posting, so. But yeah, yes, Andy is recovering from being sick, although she sounds a heck of a lot better than she did when we last spoke, so. Hopefully everything sticks together here today. Did I make it to the Wednesday night meeting? No, you did not. Yeah, see, I thought I did, but then you weren't there. And I think I may have gone to the Thursday night meeting. Yeah, probably. I wasn't anticipating you being there, and honestly, you didn't cover a whole lot from there. <laughs> I slept for, I don't know, three days straight. Almost. Okay, go ahead. I am better. Yes, an elven investigator would be slightly different than an elf investigator. Although yeah. maybe we could use an elf investigator. There's a whole lot of them. We do have quite a lot of elves. Yeah. Should that could be a gang? <laughs> Your token human. <laughs> We're not a gang of elves. Look, we have a token human. Like, oh, I don't think anybody's falling for that shit. I don't think so. And with that, I will try to remember not to say that because I don't know if we, that counts. We, 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 we can't be because, you know, everyone else abhors her violence. It's not that I abhor violence, it's just that I'm not very good at it. <laughs> yeah, some of us need to be a little less good at it. <clears throat> hey, did anyone I shoot die? Yes. <laughs> no. Not the ones that she shot. I don't actually think the ones that she shot died. Be wrong. It's true. No one river shot died, but I'm, I'm not that was sure that was entirely based on river's planning. Just, you know, happenstance. I will say, <laughs> in river's defense, no one she shot died. I will also say, once the shooting starts, it doesn't usually de escalate. <laughs> you know, just saying. No basis. I, I will to admit. Fire goes, well, gee, now let's try talking. It just doesn't usually happen that way. I will admit, I'm not convinced that situation was going to end peacefully. It was probably not. No. There are certain things, like, I think you guys totally caught on that Mark had put his affairs in order on purpose. Even if you had stopped him somewhat, you wouldn't have stopped him completely. He'd have done it later. He was not planning on being arrested. He was not planning on any of that. 
thus bringing me to the note that change the medium scent to work. Hold on one second. Cat, you are in my cord, honey. You cannot walk through my cord. There, thank you. Oh my gosh. Um, so at the end of the last episode, oh, actually, maybe we should have you guys recap it. Who wants to recap? I think, I think, um, British Joel should recap. Because I think his character is probably the most scarred. I think that's reasonable. Um, so we had been investigating a series of robberies from a prestigious jewellery firm in the fair city of London. Uh, and everything had pointed to the fact that there was an inside job going on. Our investigations uncovered... A selection of a, a money laundering scheme that was going on that it turned out wasn't directly related to the theft. But in our investigations, we did eventually find the perpetrator of the money laundering scheme, who was a gentleman named Mark, who was a long term employee of the firm, who had until recent change of circumstances expected to inherit the firm and then in his disillusionment, disillusionment had started to launder money. However, he was nothing to do with the theft. That was a little cabal of other employees led by a very handsome, very charming young gentleman who appears to have dragged several other people into his terrible ways. His name was Henry. He was being helped by Hilda, who is a, was, who was, was, unfortunately, yes, she's definitely past tense now, a security person, and Sarah, who was one of the other store assistants, and they were providing information and using some magic to influence security to rob from the firm they worked for, having had inside information about when there were lucrative shipments to be grabbed. And Charlie. We in, and Charlie, yes, but I don't believe we specifically um, fingered Charlie as part of the crime, but she was certainly being duped yeah. to get information. I don't know that you guys figured that she was part of it. Yeah. We, we thought there might be some influencing of her, but we interrupted their heist, as did Mark, what ended up in being something of a messy three-way fight ensued. River did indeed not shoot anyone who actually died in the end. She attempted to de-escalate by shooting the thieves' rifle out of their, their hands. This did not help as much as we had hoped. We eventually, except for one death, chased off the thugs. The thieves had hired, captured the two remaining thug th thieves and were attempting to talk Mark down from finally closing up all of his affairs in this world, which did not work as well as we had hoped, despite Borgana's best efforts to bring him round because she had decided that he was at heart inherently a decent person, vigilante justice. Um, notwithstanding, but it appears he took the crimes and the theft quite personally and dealt with them and then tidied up his yeah. own mess. Maybe one way of putting murders, it. But he very personally. <laughs> it was the murder, yes. It was the murders and loss of it. So, all in all, we were successful, but not without a... Certainly Morgana being quite upset by the results of the case. Yeah, it was it was a rough one, which is what you guys are told when you go and check back in. They actually want you guys to take a few days off. As this turned out to be a bit more intense than what they thought they were handing you. Um Probably a day or two after that, because I'm assuming they kind of know how to reach you guys. Like they know your your home address. 
Um, mm -hmm. Morgana will get a note sent through the office from the medium James. And it says... I have it written down so I wouldn't forget. <coughs> Literally what he writes is, he said you'd know who it was. Oh, sorry. From M. Question mark. He said you'd know who it was. <coughs> Quote. It's nice to see that there is still some honor in the aristocracy. You did more than most. Be proud and do not dwell. End quote. Well, Morgana will take the message. She will try not to dwell. But it will still take her a little moment or two to... um. I think she will also deal with matters later from the um, the maid that you guys stopped yep. on Mark's estate. That's she doesn't know why. She just feels like he would want her to send you a note. She doesn't really understand why she thinks that, but <coughs> to tell you that she's doing well. And that she thinks that he would be happy with what they've done. She's actually opened a small, like, flower shop. <clears throat> and the brother that's going through school is helping handle the books and stuff. <clears throat> which she has some difficulty with. But she's good with plants. So. But she doesn't know why. She just seems to think that he would want you to know. <coughs> the other big thing that you guys does anybody's character read the paper I will you, your August reads the paper and then mm -hmm. the other option would be anybody would possibly streetwise uh, which I also have <coughs> which I uh, paper. better guilty of both I guys. think for Morgana I was going to say, perception for anybody who thinks their character reads the paper. Joel's just gone to get some dice, I think. I have. Is it that obvious? <laughs> everybody doesn't have dice at their desk? I have dice at my desk. I think that's normal. I got a seven. No, my mother. <laughs> My dice can journey to, 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 to one of our games during the week. I have dice in every room except the bathrooms, and one time I've even found dice in the bathroom. I'm not really sure who is rolling up characters in the bathroom, but you know, hey, each their own. Um, could I use research when reading the paper instead of straight perception? Why not? That seems reasonable. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, well, in that case, let me re-roll. Well, Brad, you should have asked. <laughs> well, I didn't know if this was something that we were looking up or if it was just you know, general uh, info. Honestly, yes, but <laughs> no one can't me. tell you tell you until I know what you guys got. Sorry, what was that? That didn't help. Not that it's really helped me. I got three. three. No, that didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it didn't do any better. I just think better. So seven, and then um, Morgana. Morgana got a five for reading the paper and a thirteen for her streetwise. Okay, so Nigel comes across a story, and this is why it's a research would kind of because I can see you guys keeping an eye on this, but it's very, <coughs> something about someone escaped from the prison and uh, involved in your case. And uh, Morgana, with that high of a streetwise, yeah, Henry seems to have walked out of the prison. Like, Nigel may know Henry let, got escaped, but Morgana would know 
a little bit better details. Um, Henry just literally talked his way out. They, like, somebody stupidly let him go. And they're not even really sure why they did it. They're no. losing their job no. over this. No, River, that um, is not the takeaway you should take from this. <laughs> that is between you people. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to bring that newspaper. Me? I'm going to roll it up. I'm going to bap River on the head. River said, you should have let me just put it down. Um, but it was not a female guard. It was a male guard. And the way that you're hearing it, Morgana, is that actually it was two male guards. Like, it wasn't like a guard on his own. But two male guards just seemed to let him out and let him walk away. <laughs> but yeah. They've lost their jobs and uh, Henry's in the wind. However, Sarah is still in jail. Not that it's any of your guys' job to do anything about it. I just figured yeah. you guys would want to know. Mm -hmm. And with that, you guys have a few days to breathe, think, do stuff that out of character knowledge becomes things like, I used my AP for good and not evil, or evil and not good, I don't know. As far as how much money you guys made, if I'm remembering this correctly, that was at least three days, or was it four? I think it seemed like three days. Three or four, yeah. Yeah. And you guys get paid seven a day? I think that this one you might have gotten a better amount, like there was a bonus or something, <coughs> wasn't there? Yes, there was daily pay and half a pound a piece um, for each successful delivery. A uh, pound a piece if leak is found. So then that would be an extra pound a piece. And really, you guys found it before too many more deliveries. So you stopped it on the first delivery. So that's an extra pound and a half a piece on top of the three days. Oh, one pay. pound ten. So how much time? Right, make that one pound eleven shi one pound eleven shillings and nine pence. It isn't bad money for three days, four days work, whatever that was. Was it three or four? Do we have a decide? I think River said three, oh. and it sounds right. River, was it three days? Um, I, th I think so. Yes, we started on Tuesday, March 22nd. We're investigating Wednesday, March 23rd. We want to speak with Mark about the books on Thursday, the 24th. So yeah, and this all happened. That, and then that Thursday was when everything went down because we were doing the back and forth. Days. So, so a pound and a half plus three times the seven, so twenty-one pence, which is I don't know uh, one one shilling and nine pence. So, for three days' work does not seem bad, though, right? <clears throat> you know this is probably a lot easier having you and uh, you two here because you probably understand how to make those numbers work better than stupid American brain one pound is 20 uh, shillings uh yeah. And 240 pence. They use the euro yeah. now, Andy. They, no, we don't. No, we uh, use pound. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
I was gonna <laughs> say most of the ones I know still use a pound. Am I wrong? Did that one of yeah, one one of our players, uh, of my regular players, does remember the time of old money. So she does. If we're playing eighteen seventy nine, she does all the money conversion for us because she can just do it like that. <laughs> I've got used to it again. But yeah. Well, if you use the folio, I've got the yeah. conversion on the sheet. Yeah. One pound is 20 shillings, and a shilling is 12, 12 pence. pence. Okay. So you've got 21 <coughs> pence for your weight, which is almost two shillings. And then you have a pound and a half. Yep. So that's like one pound, 12 shillings, give or take. August is yep. rich. Yes. Well, honestly, two pounds in, in five days is actually pretty good. I oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah, I, I still have Mark's revolver. Because I disarmed him and just kind of tucked that in my back belt loop, and, you do. and we sure never resolved that, that. So yeah, you didn't hand it over to the police, and they didn't ask because they really wouldn't have. He didn't actually shoot anyone with it. We caught him before he could do that. So no, he shot. He shot Hilda with it. Yeah, he killed Hilda. He yeah. point blank killed Hilda with it. Okay. But again, they didn't really do a lot with ballistics at that time period in the police. Okay, this is our bad person. And in this case, you guys didn't turn Mark over as a bad person. So. <laughs> well, he also knifed himself. So. And then we're fair. <laughs> Which means they really don't care. I, mean, I hate to be that way, but they don't. It, it, no, it's the That's time period. Case. Yeah, absolutely. It's the time period. God. They don't have to do any more looking. You said these are the bad guys. They're arrested. And everybody else is dead and nobody's bitching. Done. So I take it, is this just standard revolver, stats-wise? Um, stats-wise, yes. It and is, it had, however, and it had the quick load. Fish. It is a, yeah, he has a quick load. It is a um, double action revolver, which is new-ish technology not super new but it's new ish I'm trying to think of the next <coughs> minute out. I know they exist but it would be a new ish yeah 1851 was the first double action revolver which by the time that they started really hitting um, a lot of easy to get a hold of. But yeah, so it's not super new. It is a nice one. This is a, this is not a, a cheap POS version. This is a Yeah, nice... no, he, he was ex-military, so... He, he definitely believed that if you're putting your life in the hands of the weapon, you make sure you have a good weapon. So I would say it is a higher dollar one if you wanted to sell it, especially with the speed reloader. It would be worth even more if you had the case. Oh, we do, because I took that from his house. Oh, you took the case. That's right. You had the case, too. So it's actually worth even more with the case, because believe it or not, that's a thing. So if you wanted to sell it, it's worth... A pretty penny. I think I'll hang on to it for the time being. We'll see what else we get into. Well, you know. <laughs> River. Yeah, I know River wants the gun, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, you don't want to That if you're listening, you can't see what's being typed on the Discord. So, I looked back over. And, River, if you don't want to use the revolver, River will take it. <laughs> what? Yes, and I believe that to be accurate. <laughs> he 
Okay. No. That that would make for a good good primary gun. It would be a good primary gun. It's a it's a nice gun. <laughs> Uh, wow. Okay. So, so what are you guys doing with your few days off to kind of recoup? Because the firm has decided that this case was, again, I think the word the firm's using is more intense than what they thought they were putting you on. I think Morgana will be um, doing a bit of drinking and maybe some unladylike behaviour um, just to deal with things, though not so much as she might if she hadn't received some strangely reassuring notes. Um, once she finds out about the young lady's flower shop, she may well set up a regular sort of account with the store to um, organize some flowers for her house and such things like that. I know some of you were looking into um, finding information from your schools and things like that. Uh, they were looking at taking healing skills. Yes. So is that what River is doing? It's going to school and asking. No. Uh, that that that's not her wheelhouse. She'll help you cut them open, but sewing them back together is a different story. Okay. What do you mean by forged? So just like in Earthdown where you can forge up a melee or missile weapon to increase its damage, you can do the same thing with firearms. Oh. That seems like an oddity. Usually if you want to do more damage, you do that with ammunition, not with the gun. It's just a um, mechanics thing. Yes. You, you can do so, more damage with ammunition as well. Yeah, like, my brain, practical gun thing. Like, a forty-five does a forty-five. You want higher, you get a bigger bullet. You want the forty-five itself to do more damage, you usually look into different ammunition. So, I would think so. I mean, that's a mechanic in 1879. And he would be... Again, this is if this is a weapon he planned on using to defend himself or something, I would imagine he had. What would be reasonable? Two times? Three times? Probably. I, I don't mean, want to give you something too overpowered, though. Well, I, I'm I mean. already overwhelmed with this thing, because it's beyond my current strength that far. Yeah. So it's not... And I'd say, it's not like I'd say two times. Two times? Okay. But, yeah. And we're not giving it to the gun expert. Why? <laughs> That's between characters. I don't have anything to do with that. Because that, Nigel that has decided not to. Out. Because you were the one that shot first. <laughs> Hey, I shot non-lethally. Okay. Can I make a point there? Yes, you shot non-lethally. However, the person being shot at knows that that was very close to their head. How would they know that that was supposed to be non-lethal versus you were trying to kill them and they got lucky? Not that it probably mattered in the grand scheme of this event. I'm just asking.
I she didn't have a gun to shoot with, so I didn't care. <laughs> okay. That's valid. Valid for the character. I'm just, you know, just asking. Sit back in my corner now. So what about uh, August? Oh, sorry, River. Go ahead. I'm going to find someone to teach me hand-to-hand -hand combat so I don't have to rely on trying to get a my revolver out. I can see that. In River's head, blah, blah, blah. You shot first, blah, blah, blah. I'll go learn to punch people. Then they can stop blah, blah, blahing at me. <laughs> the punching I'm fine with. Oh no, I'm talking. I'm talking melee weapon. She has a hand axe. Well, that, yeah, but still, <laughs> that, that's the compromise candidate, isn't it? Between shooting people and punching people, is it? Is an axe, obviously. I can turn her around and hit, hit him with the blunt side. It's true. You are allowed to go stun damage with any melee weapon. You can ask them a blunt question. Uh, I, I can bluntly yeah. ask a question. <laughs> okay. What about August? What is August doing with his days on? Um... Given he was slightly traumatized by being blinded, he is going to um, work on his awareness and looking and spotting things because clearly he needs to do that. You know, he needs to fine tune those skills. So, um, and he's also going to work on increasing his streetwise and empathic sense as well. That's good. Because it just, yeah, for him it seems reasonable. He may end up going out drinking as well, but probably not in the same establishments as Morgana. Unless Morgana invites him. And Morgana might feel bad enough that True. she wants a nice drinking night. That's true. Morgana is probably drinking at lower class establishment lower class establishments than someone might expect, um, but probably isn't quite to the stage of inviting um, work acquaintances out for drinks yet. That's very fair. Has mm -hmm. Morgana let the others know? Does Nigel let the others know that uh, Henry is out in the wind? Yes, Morgana definitely does. Um, she'll send a note. She, she'll pen a, a set of short notes to send round to people, probably via the office if I don't have people's addresses. I would let people know when we get back to the office, but seeing that, okay, we, the nose is already out. So does anybody need more in-game time to finish up or to meet up with anybody or ask questions about anything that's happened? Well, like How I mentioned, expensive is forging? Um, let me get the info pulled up here. What was that, River? How expensive is forging? Oh, and that's what he's looking up. Okay, good. Yeah, Forge, fire. I'll be honest, Brad will probably find that faster than I would. Good seeing. There's nothing Here, else. I will give you the snippet of the skill that won't have costs involved, but it lists the time frame. Weapon 
says fifty pounds per rank of the skill that the smith has, but forge weapons is a lower tier skill than forge firearm. But yeah, it is a week's worth of work, so whatever would be the appropriate cost for a gunsmith for a week of work. As far as activities that were going on, um, I had mentioned in mind before Nigel was going to see about going up in his profession. So that actually should take a week for training. So if we give it seven days, that would be March 31st. Does that sound right to everybody? Sounds good. Andy? If that's what you guys want, I'm good with this. So yeah, so if you have the money to get your weapon forged, you could get it forged in that time. But up to, to whatever you decide that would cost. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the getting the hand axe forged, but... Oh, well, it's the same mechanic for forged weapon. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have 50 pounds. Yet. However, if you guys are ready, we can at least start to introduce the next job you're offered. I'm ready. Morgana, Augustus, August, Brad, sorry, Nigel. Uh, yeah, August is, yeah. um, yeah. is good. Yeah, once I get my, I already posted earlier about what I was doing for ranks and everything, so as long as there was no issues with that, I am all set. So, since there's not enough money, I'm going to assume that three, four days, you guys have had enough of a break, looked into learning some stuff, and contact the office that you guys are ready to come back. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you'll get a note, basically shortly after you say yes we're ready to come back that says could you come in for a meeting 
9 a.m. next day type of thing. That's fine. We're going to do that on the Thursday or the <laughs> Friday? Friday. Okay, so then... So that would be April 1st. Miss Price is there and she's basically watched how you guys like your tea and just starts making your tea how you usually ask for it and handing it out and she um, would like to apologize that the last case was more than they thought it would be. But again, you all have proven yourself remarkably. Matter of fact, you've done a beautiful job making her look good to the higher ups. There's been an, a job offer usually they would be looking for a team that's perhaps well closer and or been with the company longer however with as well as you've done especially with some of the more unusual aspects of the last case she kind of has Thought that you guys get at least the chance to decide whether you'd like the case. If you're interested in hearing about it. Oh, absolutely. Certainly interested in hearing. Yes, indeed. So it um, involves a, a wee bit of travel to the United States. Well, to the farther west part of the United States. So this is Union then? It may be in the, well, she kind of looks at you and goes, I, I have to double check. I get a little confused with them. I know it's in the farther west territories. Um, I believe it's in the north. Let me, let me double check on that, then I'll get back to you, but, um, so, have you, any of you heard of a group called the Pinkertons? I've heard of them, yes. Um, uh, exactly what all... Hmm. What have you heard of the Pinkertons? Just to make sure that I don't overstep. Just that they're a private security form um, really just the basic information they sometimes do similar work to what we do they've however been getting a bit of a reputation for unusual practices and means so and she starts to hand out those little folders you've kind of gotten used to now. Our dossier. Mm -hmm. Your dossiers. <laughs> there was a... Well, I can't use the term gentleman, to be honest. There was a man. And he's a very violent man. And he... Hmm. Well, 
Apparently they did catch him, but he escaped and the Pinkertons became involved and he was recaptured, but then shortly thereafter, I, I believe the ah. word that they use is, um, no, I, that the Americans use is lynched. I believe he was lynched. Hmm. Some people believe that this has not actually ended the problem. Which, after meeting our friend James, you might understand that we believe that that is a possibility that it did not end the problem, so to speak. So in your dossier, quick glance, I will see if I can get you guys a picture. There we go. And then there is a name, and his name is George, and it's Parrot, P A or Perot, depending on if it's a French pronunciation. It's P-A-R-R-O-T-T, -T, so it may be Piro. Um, for those of you who would be somewhat familiar with the U.S., it's uh, in most of this seems to have happened in and near Wyoming, which would be northern, unless they moved Wyoming on me. Unfortunately, one of the things that uh, Miss Price is not very good with American geography. <laughs> <laughs> but in your dossier, the word Wyoming shows up. So anybody who's familiar with Wyoming, especially a town named Rollins, Wyoming, in the U.S. And I will type that over on the other things so that you have it. So, George, Perrow, and Rawlings, Wyoming. Um, basically, he's accused of everything under the sun from, like, train robbery, bank robbery, uh, cattle rustling. Uh, apparently, he was involved with, I mean, of course, he has a gang, because everybody did back in that day. Um horse thieving, crimes against um, delicate sensibilities, crimes against women, um, all sorts of horrible things. Uh, apparently he even, oh goodness, like you name it, uh, stole from some military soldiers that were moving something. There's not a lot. Apparently the military does not want to disclose whatever it was they, they were moving. But him and his gang actually stole it from the soldiers. By the way, they didn't leave a lot of soldiers left to talk about it. They didn't leave any. He is not a nice person. Um, yeah. It was a daylight robbery that involved 15 soldiers, two officers, and they're all dead and whatever they were moving, George and the gang took. So they would like to know if you would be interested in going to United States and investigating if apparently Mr. Perot is still active in his death. And if so, interested in trying to find a way to stop that.
the people involved, the people paying are basically victims. But she'll look at you and, and she'll say in all honesty, I'm not so sure that that's the entire truth behind who's paying for this. There's something, you get a, a feel for this work. There's something a bit There's something more there, but I can't put my finger on it. But whoever it is doesn't trust the Pinkertons because they feel like the Pinkertons botch things by letting him be lynched. I have to ask, is there a reason why they sought out this agency rather than one than, than one other than the Pinkertons that was local? In truth, apparently there's not a lot local in Wyoming. It seems to be a no man's land. It doesn't sound terribly civilized, if you ask me. So I don't know, but I suspect it has something to do with this um, Mr. McGee who's paying for our services. Like I said, there's something unusual about why, who this is that I, I'm just not sure of. Again, if you guys are uninterested, especially after the last bit, I would completely understand. And if it's a, a ghost, I don't know how well we'd be uh, equipped to handle it. Very true. I don't... You should just send James. Well, getting James to go that far would be a bit much. We can look into resources there for you. Considering how things have gone around James with non-violent spirits... I think getting him around this particular Might individual be a would be a bad idea. Uh, fair point. <laughs> yes. So, so we could look into, um, I'm sure we can find someone closer by to join you. What sort of um, time are we expecting this to take up? Obviously, the travel will take... I mean, the travel will take a few weeks among itself. You'll go from... Have, have any of you been on an airship? Can't say that I have. So the general plan would be... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Nigel's not saying anything, but his eyebrows are raised. Um, we find that that would be the most expedient way to cross the pond. So you would go on airship to New York. And then from New York by train. And then I believe the last bit, you'll go by carriage. I'm assuming it will take a couple, three weeks easily to make the journey. Oh, however, if you like, you can spend an extra day in New York. They apparently have started a zoo. 
with an interesting lion who grew wings and possibly talks to people. <laughs> They're calling it um, the Bronx Zoo. Yes. I'll be honest, I'm slightly interested in this grew wings and talks to people lion. <laughs> However, I don't really have the time to go and vacation at the moment. I'm assuming even if you did take the case, you'll need a day or two to get things in order because you'll be gone for, I mean, honestly, close to two months, possibly longer, depending on how things go with the investigation, possibly not as long. You handled the last thing right quickly. She'll um, probably excuse herself so you guys can talk it through and go to her office or something else. Again, I just don't say anything, but he's canvassing the room. Well, it'd be you can very. Turn down a case. You don't have to take up a case. Nothing says you. Do. I mean, I think it'd be interesting to see the lion and see how American horses. Uh, stack up against our fine British breeds. Does nobody else find it odd that they asked for someone from uh, from our group? Rather than... I do find it... I mean, yes, maybe there isn't much in Wyoming, but there are certainly cities over in in the states. Is there any civilization? Um. It is quite a distance to travel, suitability aside. Hmm. I'm not convinced that it's the best fit, but... I'm not opposed to taking the unwilling. job, but I find this very unusual. Well, as do I, but... You know. I'm presuming we don't have Waymont with us at the moment. I'm going to assume Waymont is there simply because I think he would be there. He, he most likely uh, would be for the return. Yeah. Unfortunately, the player's not here, so he's holding his, you know. Yeah, no, no. That, that, that's why I was kind of assuming he, he probably wasn't in the room. He's just keeping his mouth shut, because I don't know okay. how I feel about this. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Reasonable. Um... So, I think the airship's going to take, with loading and stuff, about three days. With loading and unloading and the whole, getting all the passengers on. Which is close to the Hindenburg, but longer, or it's a little bit longer. I don't know. Yep. Um, the train from New York, I think you're going to end up with 
several stops, obviously, possibly even changing of trains. Oh, most definitely. We're probably going to go like from uh, New York through a couple to Cincinnati, probably up to Chicago. Um, then possibly like down towards Kansas City, but I don't know. And then ending up somewhere probably in like Colorado, like Denver. And then having to go from carriage north into Wyoming would be what I think your general travel is. Most and likely we'd take... switch over to a narrow gauge line at some point. So you're still looking at by the time you switch because it never works out so easily as I got off of this and I just immediately walk on and get on the other thing. It's just never how that works. So you're still looking at another easily week and a half, I would think, Brad? Week? I don't know. I know by car, yes. where I am to there is 20-something <laughs> hours by car. And you're going farther. So... Yes. According to real world history, the Union Pacific Railroad entered Wyoming in 1867. But given political matters over in the States, that might have been delayed some. So you might be able to go straight into Wyoming and take a carriage from there. Yeah, now the, well, the whole thing with the railroads, because um, real world history, the golden spike for the Transcontinental Railroad was laid in 1869. Uh, that went south through Utah. Things have all gotten mucked up with the way the Civil War went, so they're no longer going to be taking the mid-route. They would be taking the northern route. Uh, so that's going to delay things because they're going to have a lot more snow and mountains to have dealt with. Um, I, I've been, I haven't written all of this yet, but I've been working it out because we're going to be getting to an America's source book soon. Um, so we're not nailing your feet to the, to the iron. Right. No, but, but just to, to give you the basic rundown. So yeah, the, the railroad you know, with between the political environment and the, uh, resources involved with how the Civil War went differently with 1879. Yeah, all the resources for the railroad would have been delayed quite a bit. Um, I haven't worked out exactly to say whether or not... Well, 1880s. Yeah, there probably would be a transcontinental railroad built at this particular point. It would go... It, it would be in the northern reaches, so it would probably be north of where we are heading to in Wyoming. Uh, so we'd probably be able to tra take a train most of the way. Uh, no, so we'd probably have to switch over to a narrow gauge. I don't know where Rowling is specifically. Let me look at the map. So, Rollins. Let's see on the map. And I know from having a friend that lived in Wyoming for quite a while that Wyoming is just in and of itself kind of the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it, it really is very sparsely, like, it, yeah. There's a lot of land with nothing to see. Okay, so Rollins is south Wyoming, so we would probably actually end up taking the train to Denver. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I said. So yeah. It, yeah, so so we would be end up going. Let's see, because the transcontinental. I'm not totally crazy. Yeah, transcontinental <laughs> would probably go north of where we're going. So most likely we'd switch over. I imagine we'd probably switch off of the Transcontinental Railroad in Chicago, take a train from there to Kansas City, Kansas City to Denver, and then Denver we'd probably switch over to narrow gauge, 
to get further north. Um, I'd just like you to know that's a lot of what I thought. Yay! Most, most likely to, to Cheyenne, <laughs> and then from there we'd probably do carriage, or, or you know, possibly a little bit further. They use narrow gauge more often in the uh, more mountainous areas because they can deal with tighter curves and that sort of thing. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of hopovers, basically. Either way, for as far as our group discussion is concerned, <coughs> Nigel's still suspicious that we were getting offered this job, that this job was offered our agency anyway. So that is a map from literally 1897, if it loads up properly. There it goes. From the Wyoming government. Now here, for the stream, I will switch the view over. It's kind of hard to read with the, the resolution, there. but you can see what we're looking at. So I've got one map there. I can get this one out. So it would be down. So where Rollins is, it would be kind of in this corner with Carbons and Sweetwater. If I'm looking at that correctly. Hold on. And then this next map is from 1900. Because I know we're shortly, what, just we're past 1897 itself by a few years. Or 1881. 1881. Oh. 18, yeah, so... The 1897, ooh, I've got a 1889 map, 1881, I have an 1875, here, hold on, copy, there you go, there you go, so now you can see all the different maps that I can see. So we're 1881, I got a 79 and an 85. Yeah, this the, looks very The, the 79 different. would probably be the closest. Yeah, give me just a second, I'm going to post that one. I can see Rollins on the 1879 map. Is it on there? It existed, but I don't know if it was It there. is, yeah. It's pretty much directly above the O in Colorado. That's on the bottom of the map. Yeah, it, it's pretty south. Part of the reasons the Pinkertons were involved in the first place is because when he first got captured and ran and they were hired he went into Colorado. Because that's what everybody in Wyoming does. They go to Colorado. Well, it, it has more to do with the... Um, when you cross state lines, it actually makes it really hard for the police from that state. Because mm -hmm. they have to have... And a lot of those agreements weren't as in place in this time period. So you didn't have cooperation with the other state. And yeah, she has made it fairly clear that um, there's something fishy with the, 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 the whole thing. As that, I still think it's fishy that they've asked us. 
Well, you guys in but, specific, she wanted you guys but, specifically asked. Right, no, but but, but this company, agency, yeah. Well, you guys are an up-and-coming agency. Yeah, but why are you reaching across the pond? Well, that is a good question. But yeah, you'll find a lot of uh, criminals would play this game where they make sure that wherever they're doing stuff is near a border so they can go across the border and be in a different jurisdiction. So it was a thing. Yeah, we would have, like, no authority over there, although it doesn't seem like hardly anybody has any authority over there, so I don't know that that makes a whole lot of difference. I was going to say, there's, there's, um, if you think the, the, the Bobbies are very hands-off, then this you'd be surprised at very how. The Pinkertons don't technically have authority, and they did a lot of stuff. They're also, at this point, starting to get a bit of a um, reputation for how they're doing stuff. It's kind of like... We don't have authority have, in London, strange. so... Yeah, you don't have authority in London. The Pinkertons don't actually have authority there. Uh, the Texas Rangers were notorious for going into other states and apprehending people and dragging them back, and they technically didn't have authority in the other states. It's just that the people who had authority in those states didn't care. Sadly. Uh, it is a little bit like Deadwood, but that is a little bit historically accurate. <laughs> it uh, Literally, if you look at how things happened, um, yeah, no. They, they didn't have communication in different districts or territories. Uh, you crossed state lines, you completely had nothing. Um, even if you went to a different town, a lot of times the other town couldn't do anything about it because you're in that town and depending on whether or not the sheriff of the town you went to is crooked which also happened mm -hmm. but yes that's how some of the gangs did their their stuff is they just would go back and forth and if they get in big trouble they go another state over and hide out for you know a couple months cause terror over there and then come back how do you think the Wild West got, you know, some of its more interesting stories? It's not because the police cooperated with one another. That oh, yeah. That that is... And like I said, in some ways, it's worse than the British police who at least would kind of work with each other, I think, a little bit. Because you keep in mind We're how still bad. very much... So keep in mind how bad. We're still very much in the hole. Yeah. Oh yeah, they just have the Monty Python thing where they just have the line of inspectors coming in to overrule one another. Okay, there you go. And this, <laughs> I mean, they're not going to go on horseback five days to go across the state line to hunt somebody down. And communication is not as easy. You know, like maybe your small town has a telegraph. Maybe. And often not even a phone at this point. Just, yeah, a telegraph. Almost yeah. nothing out here. Almost nothing out here had phones. Most of the phones were not in the Midwest until uh, there's a big government push and the government paid Ma Bell to put the stuff. Ma Bell being um, what... Yeah, Bell Telephone Company, but Bell Telephone Company. Although there would and be a divergence company. for that in 1879, the tech would have gotten pushed a bit more. Yeah, but, but still, it would have been pushed out to Wyoming. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. It it took a long time for it to move out. Because building a network's way. expensive. Well, it's expensive, and you're talking about vast areas where there's nothing, and you still have to build the line through the vast area of nothing. Yeah, I mean. You, 
it would help a little bit for the region since you would have the Transcontinental Railroad going through the northern reaches because you would want to have telegraph lines following along the railroad, although not necessarily right away uh, because they would operate without telegraphs and they just basically had written but, orders. Um, but you wouldn't find you, that in but since you're Since you're already building the line across the U.S. for the railroad, yeah, just put your telegraph poles right next to it to be able to run those lines. Uh, but yeah, but you, you probably... How many hundreds have... of miles? But that's the thing. That's still hundreds of miles from... Yeah, no, they, they wouldn't have gotten it out to all the little towns and everything yet. So it will it will help for certain areas, you know, certain places within the region to be connected, but probably not where we're going. Well, I mean, if you go to... Oh gosh, Laramie's fairly large, so it probably has a telegraph. Um, of course, like Cheyenne does. Near where you guys are gonna be. Um, the Fort Wood. There's a fort somewhere up here. I'm trying to remember where it is. I will remember when my brain is better. But yeah, there's gonna be some of the larger not tiny tiny but keep in mind there's not a lot of little towns in between that aren't on this map oh yeah and absolutely wyoming is oh my goodness at this stage of time there's probably a whole bunch of little towns in between that aren't even like towns I was gonna say they're not towns. They're, 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 just, be they're just random, people. yeah, random collections of houses. Cause yeah, I'm trying to think how big is Wyoming? Wyoming's not tiny. Wyoming's big, but the livable area is a difference because there's so much of the Rockies taking up the the space. So ninety-seven thousand nine hundred and fourteen square miles. All right, so the UK, so it's bigger than the entire UK. The UK is 94,058 miles. This is 97,914 miles. So it is several thousand miles bigger than the UK. So yeah, it's, it's still, a you know, it's a thing. Missouri is smaller. Does that help? <laughs> it's only 69,715 miles. Ta -da. But anyhow, yeah, it, it's a very big area, but it's also a very empty area. Uh, there are people who live in the Rockies. Not a lot. Because <laughs> that's hard. There are hill folk. There are hill folk. You guys shouldn't be spending much time up there I don't think all of the stuff happens closer to the border with Colorado okay and like I said so, I'm not opposed to taking yeah. the job but I find this so all highly suspect technically at this point unless it's changed because the timelines changed it's not even actually a state it's still a because um, Joel pointed out it's still technically a territory is the territory of Wyoming, to be exact, at this point. I don't think it becomes a state until another couple of years. Yeah, I haven't, 80, I haven't 19, worked out 80, the, the specifics for all of it yet. Yeah. I'm on the way to doing it, but... Oh, I know. But, but <laughs> so, for right now, it currently, we're just going to fiat, and it's still a territory. So, yeah, it would be a lot like Deadwood. Like, it's not even technically a state, so... Um, your highest really authority in this type of area. I don't know if any of it. <laughs> the highest authority is whoever's got the <laughs> biggest gun. And hey, I'll be in charge. Goes down to, that usually goes down to the military. However, keep in mind, Big Nose George robbed the military at some point during this mess. So it is really whoever has the biggest gun. 
or the most guns because that's usually how these things end in well there's one of you and there's 20 of us and now you see why I didn't hand over the revolver because I knew some crazy thing like this was going to happen didn't know if it was going to come up now or later but some point we're going to need it right yeah you might and also it's actually very easy to transport weapons across the countries at this point because there's no rules against it yeah because nobody's watching that nobody cares it's not even that they're not watching they just don't care yeah people carry guns and they don't care Well, that's everybody else's thoughts on the job here. Uh, very similar to yours, to be honest. Hey, interested in going over there, just not sure that this is our wheelhouse of a job. Yes. I'm... Of similar thought. Well, if something suspicious is going on, be it from the circumstances how we're being hired, or whether it's just purely with this particular job, since they sought out our agency, should we go and, and let events play out and see where we may have to address it from there? I will say, out of character knowledge, technically, at least the way that I run certain things, part of you can deal with a ghost because magical stuff will affect ghosts. You guys, kin character, probably have no idea about that. And I don't know if that's how Brad runs the game system. I've just always ran with that if it's magical, it can affect ghosts. Oh, like if you're fighting a ghost? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, the way it works, so, like, you could you could try to punch a ghost, but it's going to be based off of your willpower rather than your strength on whether or not you do any actual damage. Oh, yeah, I, I just have it where, it, like, if, if you're trying to punch the ghost with just, I have a fist and I have nothing magical to do with that, it just doesn't work. That's how I've always ran that one. Yeah, it, it yeah, it's more... anything that it, it's... has magic or a weapon that's magically enhanced, those can hit. But I don't know that any of your characters would know that. Oh, That's Waymont those... is there, and he'd probably be able to explain that. <laughs> well, at least that theoretically he thinks it would. Yeah. But, you know, it's so... more... Sim... The way magic works in the system is it's more symbology-based. It's... If you... The whole... The base mechanic is belief creates reality. So if you believe it hard enough, you can make it happen. So that's why it's willpower based versus you know just strength. Okay, I can maybe see that. So, it sounds like at least part of you are going to want to pass. Is that the general consensus? Yeah, kind of for me because like it's ghosts, it's America. There'd be cool things to see, but I don't think that I'm at a level that I get that we could handle it. Well, that River can handle it. I said I'm willing, but I find it all very suspicious. The whole calendar is, I think, in the same boat as River and not being sure what should be able to contribute and would be out well out of our areas of knowledge 
Mm. Yeah, it's being well out of the comfort zone, I think, for most of us, by the sounds of that. Yeah. So you guys tell Miss Price that that one is a pass. Which is fine. With apologies, and we're just not sure we are the right people for the job. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure you were offered. I agree that there's something very... Oh, I don't need to do the ghost in the U.S. thing. It's okay. I Look, this is set up so that you guys can turn down a case. That's not a problem. Because I can do ghosts in the U.K. if I want. There's a beautiful one with a headless woman in a pub. That's how Lewis Price is offering to us next. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think so now, ass to hats, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, there's one in specific, and I can't remember which one it was. But basically, the brother still runs it, and the ghost is supposedly there, and it's very weird on whether or not the brother's the one who caused her to be headless. Like, it was all very sketchy, and never really looked into, if that makes sense. So... Trying to find it, not a ghost one, but you know, hey, could be a ghost. He doesn't like ghosts. <laughs> well, here's a good one for you. So you guys don't take that case, which is fine. You'll get a, a message probably in another couple, three days, let's say three days later. Um, they want you to come in and look at a case and see if it's something you think you want to take on. Oh, did you guys see the ghost when you were there in the Bolton Castle? Uh, no, but it does feel a little weird. Sets my hackles up, just the Bolton Castle, certain areas of Bolton Castle. Really? Yeah. That's because it's the coldest place on earth. <laughs> you do Only in February. February is <laughs> true. <laughs> Explain to my dog why she doesn't need my popcorn. All right. So you guys gather back around. Miss, Miss Price is there. Well, it's, it's a bit of a gruesome case. And she starts, you know, she passes out tea. And unless somebody stops her, she's repeating the same things that you usually ask for on the tea again. Mm -hmm. So, um... In the file folder is a Mrs. Thomas, who apparently has been killed. Um, there was blood found in her house, but the body is missing. 
from the amount of blood, the police believe she's dead. However, they're not totally sure. I mean, they're pretty sure. That seemed like a lot of blood. And her estate is paying to try to find the killer. She um, doesn't, I think that there is a son and a daughter-in-law and they were not on the best of terms. Apparently the son married someone that Mrs. Thomas did not approve of. And so the estate, before they pay things out, want to make sure that he is clear and obviously not the perpetrator and that she is mm -hmm. actually gone before they hand over her estate and declare her dead. So technically there could be ghosts, but as far as Miss Price knows, there are no ghosts and nobody claiming to have seen ghostly things. So it was his strange son who married someone unsuitable. Sorry, what was that? It was her son who'd married someone unsuitable. Or... Yeah. She she has never approved of the daughter-in-law. And it caused a rift between her and her son. So, is the daughter-in-law someone of wealth just, like, lesser? Um, that's not in the folder. It just says that they're estranged and that the um, lawyer, Esquire, who's in charge of the estate, okay. said that... Uh, she was unsuit that Mrs. Thomas considered her unsuitable. Was she a boo job? Um, it doesn't say in the folder. <sighs> but the phrase unsuitable could pop out quite a range. Yeah, unsuitable could mean a lot of things. It could mean that she just has a different religion. Or different colored hair or something like that. Who knows? It could be a redhead. Like that was, that. that's actually something that people don't think of, but has been, even in the U.S., has occasionally been, you know, looked down upon. My father, <laughs> growing up, because he was redheaded and a um, left-handed. Like, they were convinced that he was going to... Yeah. Like, he would get hit at school all the time. Because redhead, left-handed, that meant he was going to be a criminal. Also, Watsons tended to be Baptist preachers or criminals. But, you know, hey, no, no correlation. See, now you just channel but that energy into, you know, game mastering and, and your game development. There you go. It, um, yeah, there's a couple of brothers. We lost an entire branch of the family. So two of the brothers robbed a train. They split the money. The one went north. And we lost that entire branch of the family because he went north. And nobody ever knew what happened. 
the other branch, the last time they had a major gathering was in like the 70s and basically they were better armed than the police and uh, it turned into a thing and uh, they're pretty much supposedly not to ever assemble again. I don't know. There's versions. I'm not... There is a Watson, Oklahoma, where the Watson gang used to hang out. That was their hideout. <laughs> we have cousins, like, we're not related to Jesse James, but we have cousins who rode with the James. So they're in the James gang, <laughs> not Jesse. Uh, Bell Star is related by marriage. And she's an interesting character. Um, yeah, they. there's also the joke that, like, two of the wives came off of like reservations and very possibly didn't even necessarily speak English. So whether or not they were consenting to have left, I don't know. But it has created the joke that if you don't run fast enough, you could be a wife. I'm just saying. I don't know. But yes, they're mostly petty. I'm taking from this is you're from the sensible, um, mild part of the family, which is a terrifying thought, knowing you. Um, so there's one who is named the deacon, and the deacon got into a fight with somebody at the <laughs> church and asked the man to step outside, and as soon as they stepped outside, the deacon shot him. Now, understand, one, the deacon <laughs> didn't go to jail for this because this is the Wild West. And two, apparently... Because fighting in the church was sacrilege, so you didn't do that. So he literally stepped outside and shot him on the front step. That somehow seems better. I don't know, but yeah. So, you know, there you go. So, so now, yes, what so you now guys we just know need is... to get an Andy campaign supplement for 1879. <laughs> Andy's family history. Yeah. They all lie, too. That's the one of the... No, I'm dead serious. So, like, I have a great aunt whose name is Lucille, right? But actually, her first name is Emmer. Her father, which would be like my great-great-grandfather, um, couldn't write. So when he told the nurse, and out here, there is um, an, ac an Ozarkian accent. Now, he's from Arkansas. And so sometimes they have ideas instead of an idea. So when he said Emma, it came out Emma. And I guess the nurse had asked, and okay, so her actual first name is Emma Lucille, which is why she always went by Lucille. Now, when asked where she was born, because my mom was trying to do the genealogy stuff, she gave the right city name, but she lied about the state. To my parents, lied about the state. She also was married like nine times. And I believe that there were two deaths of husbands and maybe two or three divorces, which does not add up to nine times. <laughs> Sometimes she just got tired of that husband and, and left and married somebody else. <laughs> and she's mild. I, I do believe that perhaps money uh, was taken when she would leave and... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, and she's mild, but they would lie about where they were born. They would lie about the years. There's like my mother had to all but give up on the genealogy because nobody. Yeah, there weren't computers, me. so nobody looked it up. They just wrote it down. Well, in some of the places, it was written down, and there were fires, and those things are just lost, right? And when you then have the people who were alive lying about pretty much everything. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like. Well, and, for the mispronunciations, that's no worse than the Pennsylvania Dutch. Yeah, dude. But yes, so so her first name is actually Emma, which she did not care for. Just so you know. <laughs> Anyways, so, uh. <laughs> So, so we're what looking you know is not as much about this. It is in London. Um, nobody. The son's name is Oscar. He married what at least 
Mrs. Thomas decided was an unsuitable woman whose name is Audrey. And basically, the the lawyer, Esquire here, wants it looked into to make sure that one, he's not handing out an estate for someone who's coming back, right? Who isn't really dead. And two, to make sure that because I mean, even in even in England at this point, you can't kill the person and then take all the stuff if you're the one who killed them. You know, they have to kind of have proof you killed them, but because that's bad. Oh, let's see. I think this one would be interesting to take. Yes. Oops. Seems to be more straightforward, at least on the surface. How long since the apparent death? Literally, it's only been a day or so. This case just came in. <clears throat> Um, the staff found her, well, the, the staff found the blood and called the police or sent someone to get the police, technically, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, I think, and maybe you guys can correct me, Mayfair would be a well-off borough. Oh, yes. Not, but not crazy. Not, it's not like, um, oh, goodness. It's not like, um, Gov, 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 what is it, Grovesner Square? Grovesner. Yeah, Gro there you go. It's not quite that well-off, but it's definitely in the well-off area. And I bet you I have maps of that somewhere, don't I, Brad? Right? So, sorry, were you asking box? for me? I was fighting Sonny. He was trying sorry. to get my cinnamon rolls. Oh. Oh. Whatever makes you feel better. Batsy's been begging for popcorn the entire time. Mayfair would be in the London maps box set. Oh, I'd have to look. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So we yeah, don't even have maps if we want to get fancy. I have to go digging. Pretty sure of it. It's not a district or, or a borough called Mayfair, so where would that one be? No, it's... Give me a moment, I'm just looking it up. Which borough? Uh, it's Westminster. Westminster, okay. West End of London, towards the east yeah. edge of Hyde Park. pull this up for the stream for anybody who wants to see the map we have. Yeah, 
There we go. It's on the west end. Where there's Knightsbridge Grove. Okay, I know this exists. <laughs> so when I'm looking at the map, where would I find it? Um, it is... The area just above the one. So if you go straight up from the one, which is Park Lane down one side of it, and the park just the other side of Park Lane, that yeah. section is then okay. Is Mayfair. Um, so basically, between Park Lane and Audley Street. Uh, no, it goes out a bit further than that. Uh, give oh. me a moment. Region between Park Lane and Regent Street. Okay, so that's it. About north of Piccadilly, and between yeah. Park Lane and Regent Street. So... Yeah, she's probably if she's not top end of class. I think it's sort of the further west you go, the posher it will get. So if she was um, up in that very northern corner of like Oxford and. So the further west, the closer to the park, the wealthier you are. So she's yes, close yeah. to Regent Street. So she's yes, in that yeah. corner of Oxford and Regent. Yeah. There you go. There's a little park right there. It's kind of a cul de sac -y thing. Do you see the little dot of green? And then there's buildings around it? That would be Hanover Square, I think. So how do we, I think that would be where we put her. Yeah, that sounds, uh, Hanover Square quite a, well, certainly was, I think, quite a fancy area, so reasonably. Oh, it's one of the areas that's been completely Again, redeveloped, looking at a modern map. Technically, Mrs. would be Lady. Probably. In that area? Or you think it'd still be fine to be Mrs.? She could be Mrs. Um, just, it'd be sort of, well, it'd use you know, social rank four, Going on five, possibly, but maybe, yeah, maybe mine and ability, but I suspect that have made a bit more of a wave. Yeah, this would be wealthy, but not quite nobility level. Yeah. And maybe her husband before he passed was pretty high in the military and then did well in, I don't know, stock or exchange shipping type of thing was a complete sure. banker yeah yeah he's like a yeah he's a banker so so well to do only one child and that's where she lives up there because we have a map and we can do fancy map things <laughs> All right, so what are you guys thinking? I mean, this one seems more within our wheelhouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys take the job? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Morgana would even possibly state it's practically in her neighborhood, so... <laughs> That's my neighbor. I think I met her at the market. <laughs> well, I suspect Morgana's actual house is probably <laughs> closer to the park. Um, yeah, that's the point. Where is uh, the family house? I, I Somewhere posh in London was as far as we'd ever decided. So I was thinking Mayfair or Marlow. Mayfair would actually be reasonable, but it's probably closer to the park. Okay. 
this is kind of like that whole how you're getting to you know wyoming i actually feel <laughs> some tension just little tiny bits at a time so so that's the region um basically yesterday morning the staff contacted the police the police don't seem to know what to do there's no body <laughs> whoever you know they they seem to have wrapped it up after they believe because there's no trail of blood to follow that the body was then wrapped up and taken out of the house they're not sure why because usually if you kill somebody you just like leave the body but they took it and no blood trail but that much blood so they assume so then they con or either the staff or the police contacted the next of kin and or the person in charge the esquire the lawyer in charge of the estate the next of kin the son wants you know to take over the family finances because she's dead and the esquire well, there's no body, and the police aren't terribly much help. They're like, there's no body. There's no blood trail. They are, however, pretty sure that that amount of blood makes you very dead. They believe she was killed, like, in her sleep before the staff got up. There did not seem to be any, like, break-in entry point that they found. I think that's all that that's in the report that the police know. So you guys have been hired because you're getting a fairly good reputation, especially in the posh areas, I guess. And this guy doesn't want to turn over stuff without some proof that one, the son isn't involved and two, that she's actually deceased. And just so, just so I'm making it, my, I'm fully clear on it. It is the daughter-in-law that is dead, and not the mother. No, it's the mother who's dead. Okay. Kathleen Thomas is dead. The son's name is Oscar, and his wife's name is Audrey. I probably should get you the um, Esquire's name. By the way, since we jumped ahead a couple of days for this one, I'm assuming we can just put this on Monday the 4th, since we were at Friday the 1st with the Wyoming one. Yeah, so Monday the 4th is when you get the case. She was found dead on the 3rd, which would be Sunday. Okay. Well, they're moving pretty quick then. They don't have anything to go on. There's no break-in point. There's no blood trail, and according to questioning of the staff, nobody saw anything. There's just way too much blood in a bed and no body. Which the son is pushing that he get access to the estate because she's dead. This is why the estate is saying, well, wait, this is really fast. There was a pool of blood found. We don't actually know, no, she's dead. Let alone what happened. Does that make sense? So the estate is trying to slow down as Thomas seems to have declared, Oscar has declared that it's his estate now. All right, so mom's dead. Uh, 
strange sky. Lovely. Yeah, I mean, we can start investigating if it, if it is, if everyone's up for it. That's yes. Let's. Well, shall we go to the administrator of the state first? I'm assuming they'll have an office. Yes, let them know we office. let them know we've taken the case. Get names in of, of who all we should be speaking to. Contact info, all that. that so that sounds like what you guys know right now correct did i get typed in well enough you guys will fix it all right yeah that looks about right all right so you guys go to the so stephanie rollins is a minor associate at a law firm that's got like four names and hers is not one of them but you have no trouble finding the you know, law office, and it's it's pretty darn posh. Like, it really is. And you're seated for a few minutes out in the lobby before you're taken back with, I'm going to assume, all five of you there. You're probably shown into a um, conference room. Mm -hmm. And... Miss Rollins Esquire comes in. She's she's a um she's kind of a sprightly dwarf. She's a little thinner of build than you usually think of it as a dwarf. She's got um this blonde, almost strawberry blonde hair, and it's in this fairly elaborate braided updo her age is a little hard to guess at this point she's definitely not in her 20s but she's somewhere in this mysterious 30 to 40 range but she still has a bit of a spring in her step and a twinkle in her eye as a general rule although she doesn't seem quite as cheerful but you can kind of tell that she doesn't have like frown lines And we will make introductions. How much are we taking to investigate and find out? Uh, innocent. Um, that is up to you guys. That is not... <laughs> so, um, she, you know, thanks you. There's a, a secretary with tea, water, coffee, passed around. Um, well, I'm pleased to meet everyone. However, it is under sad times. I've been told that you are excellent investigators. And she kind of sighs and she says, I am not comfortable with the speed in which 
Mr. Thomas would like the estate released. Um, I believe you all have a general understanding of what's going on. I, I will try to cover everything succinctly. And she'll give the address, which you guys already had. She'll say that yesterday morning, um, a her lady's maid in particular, Kathleen's lady maid, uh, went to wake her and bring her her breakfast, which is customary for the household and found a pool of blood instead in the bed. She then went and, well, she screamed quite loudly apparently and then the police were brought in and the police decided that there was enough blood there to declare her dead. However, they seem to have no leads and whereas she believes they're investigating the crime. They believe Mrs. Thomas to be deceased. And they questioned the staff and they have no leads. Apparently there's no sign of a break-in and there was no trail of blood left. There was um, bedding taken from the house. However, she really feels like Mr. Thomas is um, chomping at the bit to take over the estate. And since she is the, um, what's it called? Executor. Um, yes, since she's the executor, thank you. She's unwilling to release it at this point until some answers are found. Is there anything she can help answer? Is there any reason you know of for Mrs. Thomas to have um, absconded, um, left on her own accord? For her to have no. No. Nothing you know of. Um... No, she was in her oh goodness, 60s and a lady of very strict schedule, so to speak. She was very set in her ways. A complete creature habit, then. Um, um, yes, very much. And no, she does not mean if she's not to make to shoot her. We are not. No, 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 no. That is not what she means at all. Oh, I just want to make clear. To everyone. Everyone. If found, if 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 she's alive. <laughs> I, I'm assuming that comment was directed Rollins more to Esquire. River than to. Um, Rollins Esquire would like her brought back safely. <laughs> We'll make that very clear. That was that was completely out of character, but I, and I'm not going to claim it was directed to anyone in particular. <laughs> I mean, in case I didn't make it clear, Miss <laughs> Stephanie Rollins Esquire will make it very clear that she would like her found alive. But yes, she was very set in her ways. Given there is no sign of break-in, who do we know who had keys? She'll have to think about that for a minute. Um, the butler, of course, had keys. She believes the lady's maid, Emma, had keys. She also believes that um, 
the head of the kitchen had keys. But otherwise, she's not totally sure who on staff might also have keys. I'm assuming we'll get more of that information from the butler. Speaking of, um, who would be the main point of contact of the estate? Or of the, the house? Household. Um, the three she just listed would be probably the most in charge people there. The butler, Emma, the personal lady's maid, and the uh, kitchen. Just curious, uh, what were the odds of the people walking an occupied house? That is a very valid question. And quite frankly, they didn't always walk houses in this time period. And sometimes that gets into, uh, and you guys, Brad can correct me on this, it, it also goes into, like, the front door might be locked, but, like, the servant's doors aren't always because they might have shipments early in the morning. Um, and if your kitchen staff didn't want to get up that early, they might just leave it unlocked. And if it's a regular shipment, just expect to see it there when they get up. Uh, that would be very much case-by-case case Yeah. handling. So, and quite frankly, honestly, uh, Miss Esquire does not know that information, whereas she has visited with, you know, Mrs. Thomas on several occasions to make sure that the estate was in order. She was not, like... Yeah, no, I wouldn't expect her to know details of how the household is run. Um, so, given Mr. Thomas quick response has he been in regular contact we, we understand from the the dossier that he so, was estranged the she believes that the police contacted him to ask for where he was and that's how he knew um he was in some contact with his mother but as his wife was apparently not welcome it would be quarterly almost. Like major holidays type of thing. Have there been... Any other oddities that you've noticed with the estate or anything like that that have come through? No. Nothing that she would have... No unusual... Um, nothing unusual with the accounts. And she's not said anything that made her think that something was and I misspelled Alifair. I was close. She's sorry she doesn't have a lot better information. No, but that's fine. We're, we're just looking to get the baselines established. No, uh, uh, absolutely. And she'd be happy to help answer anything you have. She just wishes that she could tell you a bit more. Um, she will make a comment that when she says Kathleen was very set in her ways. Well, hold on. I'll, does anybody ask why she doesn't like the daughter-in-law? It probably uh, comes up, yes. Uh, yeah, I was going to bring it up eventually. It just hadn't gotten there yet. Okay, sorry. I'll let you guys keep going. What do you got? What made Miss Audrey unsuitable? She's Catholic. When I say that Mrs. Thomas was set in her ways, she was... Um, and you can tell she's struggling to try to find a very polite way of putting this. 
very particular about pretty much everything. It's not unusual for her to fire staff or quit using a vendor or any considered slight. Um, I'm actually the fourth lawyer at the firm to handle her estates. Now, I mean, for her, she's done very well. I mean, that's in 15, 20 years. However, like I said, um, she's been very known to take a dislike for almost any. But yes, um, I believe Audrey is Catholic. And she uh, believes that everyone should be Church of England. Part of the visits that uh, Oscar would go to were holidays, especially going to church and taking her to church. Again, as Audrey is Catholic, she didn't attend, and I believe it caused a lot of strife that Oscar went to with his mother to keep some relationship, even though she was unwelcome. So she definitely doesn't seem like the sort of person who would fake her own death to vanish. No. And for the year, Easter would have been on the 17th, so he would have been in contact soon. Yes, that would make sense, yeah. Probably to make arrangements to pick her up. Right. But no, she's absolutely not the type to have decided to run off. I don't think I have any other questions here. We'll definitely want to go see the estate, or the, I keep saying the estate, see the, the house itself. Um, unless anybody else has anything else they want to ask. I can't do anything at the moment. Has there been a full account of personal property in the uh, in the house? So what um, Miss Rollins knows is that no one has mentioned any theft. So as far as she knows, there's been nothing stolen. She assumes that the police asked the staff. Um, she's not sure that Oscar would know what was or wasn't in the house. Like, he would know major big things in the commons area, but as far as, like, her bedroom, he would probably have no idea what was or wasn't in her bedroom. Um, and since no one has mentioned theft to her, she believes there was no theft.
Okay, so no Seth, body. So it's someone that knows knows her routine. Any recent firings? Several. I will start making a list. How recent do you want? Or how far back do you want her to go? The last handful of firings, I guess. Last five. Last ten. And she may not have a complete list. She would just have a list of people who are, were payroll. If you want, like, vendors that were fired or things like that, um, Oliver or Emma or Alifair would know better. Yeah, I think we need to get um, more of this from the butler because he would be the main one in charge of the household and we need more context. It's a good question to ask, but I think we need yes. more information to narrow it down. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and she like she may not because she may be paying to the to like the butler has an access to the account and he pays everybody, or she may pay them directly from the account. But if it was a vendor, then it would probably be under the kitchen. So yeah, and even at that, Oliver may know better than. But the lawyer knows. She can tell you that there have been several, though. Um, Mrs. Thomas was, again, very particular and um, hard to work for. Let's. I'd say let's do this. Do you have a phone where we could call if we need to verify any information? I think they would. We can take that information. If we have I don't reasons. know that she has like a specific phone or if it's just one for the building that you can reach her through it. Yeah, we'd have some way to call over and ask and they'd probably give that to like a junior staff or whatever just to go look up on the, the chart. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that part, yeah. Yeah, now we can get that established. All right. We are coming up on uh, close to three hours. Do we want to pause because we don't have... Um... Chris? Yeah, we don't have Chris. Chris, wait. I... Brad? Um, I'm fine either way. I will we go, go... I will go with however the group stopped. votes on that one. I'm going to assume, and it may be a dumb assumption, that your next stop is going to be her house. That would be my next move. Yeah. And then we'll, yeah. Have, we'll need to actually start rolling dice. Very possibly. I don't think it's a... I don't think it'd be a bad place for us to break for the week. And then we can get onto the dice rolling when our GM is rec fully recovered and everything. Okay. What Jill said... <laughs> Got it. I'm fine if we want to like get there and start, and then he can come in at the beginning of the next session, or if we want to just pause it and begin the whole thing when he's here and he's caught up to speed. I'm, you know, I, I'm fine I'm either okay way. I'm okay either way. I just want to know what you guys want to do. Yeah, I'm fine either way. Uh, I think I suggest we call it and then just get on with the full investigation next time when we've got everybody here present. So motion on the floor to call it. Seconded. All in favor? 
Ay. Uh, nays. Hearing no nays, it passes. We are done for the day. And you guys will start with catching Chris up, which shouldn't be too hard, and then going to the estate. <laughs> Let her know we dodged going to Wyoming. <laughs> At least for now. Yeah. <laughs> Pun entirely intended, but I suspect that may come back and haunt us. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> We say goodbye so you can shut down the stream. Yep. Oh, uh, a hey, piece. Oh, um, that's a good question. Uh, how do you guys feel about 200? That's fine. It was that's a shorter good. session. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that written down because I'm actually going to need to total more of those now since I went up a professional level did everybody go up a professional level I know that they don't have to because it just depends on how you spend stuff I'm a god already had same for river and same for August I'm Everybody not sure. Can... I think Chris just went and spent a bunch more on more spells. So, no one having trouble with the leveling? Everyone's doing okay? Questions? Yep, I, th I think we're all professional level nope, 2 at this good. point. Yeah, it seems good to me. You guys are awesome. See? All right. Well, with that, I think we will go ahead and get everything signed off. So thank you very much for everybody for tuning in. Um, I will. I know I still need to get the the freaking backlog updated on uh, YouTube. I will be getting that done here. That's on the the plan for the weekend. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, and we will see you guys in the next one.